Welcome back. We're talking uh, with members from the Optimized Healing Center in Port Elgin, and we are talking about uh, the Brain Achievement Program that you mm -hmm. have there. Uh, you're working with uh, people with learning disorders, um, brain anyone, injuries. Brain injuries. Anyone who just wants to increase their their level of uh, efficiency. Exactly. Okay. So we have got Maddie, our test subject here. That's right. So tell me what you're going to be doing, Andy. My tool is called the Interactive Metronome, and it is a testing and assessment and training tool. It's computer-based. Um, it looks at the brain's ability to take in auditory information, sound, and then process that and have a physical reaction to it. So what Madeline, my beautiful subject here, will be doing is she'll be listening to the sound of a bell, and her job is to clap on top of the beat moving her arms in a big circle. So it's not the circle that's important, it's her ability for her brain to react to a sound and do a physical action. Okay. Just like listening to your teacher and writing something down. Okay. Okay. Um, maybe Doug wants to talk a little bit more about what we do in the clinic, just as I get this computer set up here. Sure. So we were talking before we went to break yeah. uh, um, a little bit about how everything ties in. Yeah, and I, and I did want to get uh, the point across about how I'm a chiropractor. So 27 years doing this with a, with a real um, uh, liking of neurology, special, special liking of neurology. Um, and most people, when you say chiropractic, they think of a back problem or a neck problem. You automatically hear your neck snapping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's not how this fits in. Right. Basically, when chiropractic was first started, it was, a, it was started as a healthcare system and basically to optimize brain to body, body to brain communication. And that's what we're doing here is we're optimizing uh, feeding sensory input up to your brain so that your brain can make a better or a more efficient reaction to that. Uh, there's your five senses that we're most uh, aware of, right? But there's three others that we're not so much aware of. And one of them is called the proprioceptive system. And that is how your brain knows where your body is at any given moment in its environment. Okay. Proprioceptor cells are located in all our joints of our body. So very, very rich in your spine and your pelvis. So it's very important that those areas, those vertebra, we call them subluxations where they're out of place, which then your proprioceptive system shuts down to a degree in that area. So now you're getting false information to where your body is, where that joint is at any given moment. And a reaction is a defense mechanism, the tightness of the muscles which then can cause you back pain or neck pain. So what we do is we analyze that through a posture exam, which is a blueprint of how your body's dealt with stress over time. So we have a nice blueprint. Then we go about locating these and adjusting them and increasing your proprioceptive input, which can make all the world of difference when then we tie in the biofeedback and the neurofeedback. It's just a very good marriage. Okay. All right, we're ready to go if you okay. guys are right here. Take us away. Right. So Madeline, my, the instructions are, you're going to listen to the sound of the bell. I'd like you to clap on top of the bell every single time. The first five bells are just to get you into the rhythm so they don't actually count in your score. Okay? Yeah. And this is going to go for one minute. All right, I'd like you to take a nice big deep breath in and out. Perfect. And we'll see here. There we go. That's it. And you can close your eyes if that makes it easier. Yeah. See, closing your eyes would take one of those sensory systems away that would make her be able to concentrate a little bit more. So somebody in a classroom that has issues with visual sensory um, could make all the world a difference in their ability to learn. Uh -huh. Now you can see green is closer to the bell, yellow is a little further away, and then when we get into red, can you get that, Jeff, on the screen here? There we go. So as we talk about Madeline, you can see that it's affecting her ability to stay on the beat. Uh -huh. That's because she's listening to us and the bell at the same time. Of course, in real life, that happens all of the time. So the ability uh -huh. to pay attention to one sound. A good example is that if you're driving down the road, right? You, you're going away on vacation. You got the dogs ground. and the kids in the car, and you, it, you come into it's a rainstorm, and the rain's just coming down. Right? What do you start to do? You, you tell the kids to be quiet, 
you shut the radio off maybe mm -hmm. um, you know you maybe even have to pull over because it's just sensory over or overwhelming right and that's what's happening to some of these kids they just <coughs> have a sensory overload that's happening so they can't learn okay this second round is going to be the bell plus other sounds and your job is to listen to the bell over top of those other sounds okay to pick the bell out it actually helps if you think the word bell in your head okay nice big deep breath in and out and again feel free to close your eyes if it makes it easier nice big round circles Now, normally, the client would have earphones on, and they would be listening to these sounds. Some sounds come in the left ear, some sounds come in the right ear. Now, okay. they're very distracting, but over time, their brain starts to figure out that those sounds are actually guiding them as to whether they're too early or too late. So now you're practicing, processing auditory signals. Okay. We have a little less than three minutes left. All right. I'm going to ask Madeline, while she's doing this, just to step up on those wobbler things there. Now she's got a balance challenge as well as auditory. That's it. And Madeline, just make sure you look around the room as you're doing this. So that's what we do is we try and load the system. Right. It's, it's like going to the gym and lifting weights and then sitting on a balance board. You're using more of your muscles. Right. You're using more areas balance. of your brain. In fact, when we get Thanks, them on Madeline. balance, we're using um, their vestibular system, which is your balance system. And that's the first system, sensory system to form in development. So if you can train that, you also get a positive effect on all the other okay. systems. Absolutely. All right. Something else that we train heavily is anxiety. The ability to control your anxiety using breathing techniques, heart rate variability, heart rate coherence. So learning difficulties lead to anxiety or do anxiety issues lead to learning disabilities? Okay, because there are people of all ages who have anxiety issues. Absolutely. Uh, it's, I think it's a lot more common than a lot of us realize. It's the leading uh, diagnosed problem in America. Okay, so just, uh, I think we have a, probably a minute and a half, I'm just guessing. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard any different. What would you use, we have one minute, what would you use this for? Visual tracking is incredibly important in everything that we do. When we drive, it's very important for us to be able to look out down at traffic and then look down at our speedometer to make sure we're going the right speed. In school, being able to look at the board and then look down at your paper. So convergence and divergence is something that we train. So Madeline, I want you to keep your eyes on this sparkly ball. And I'm going to throw it to you and I want you to track it as it comes in. Yeah, and then I want you to track it as it goes out. So I'm going to ask you to look at it and keep it in your visual field and in focus as you throw it back and forth. So okay. I have some people that come to see me, little kids, who when I ask them just to look at the ball, they can't do it. They yeah. struggle. Okay. So visual tracking. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Maddie, for being our test <laughs> subject today. We've got 20 seconds left. So you're in Port Elgin. In Port I Elgin. think we've got your contact information there, which they have put up on the screen. We're right on the street. So anyone that has any questions can give you a call. Give and us a call. We'll be to happy to... Try and all help. right. Thank you so much, all of you, You're for welcome. coming in. Thank today. you for, Thank having, you. Us. for yeah. having us. Some information. We'll be right back with Great County Life on Rogers TV.